Uh, good afternoon. This meeting of the Napa Valley College Board of Trustees is now called to order at 4.31 p.m. We welcome members of the public. Instructions for making public comment are post posted in item one on the agenda, and we will ask at each item if there is any public comment. Catherine, could you please do roll call? Yes, ma'am, and I just uh, brought in Trustee DeLuna. Hooray. So, uh, student trustee Soto Gonzalez. Here. Trustee Rios. Here. Trustee DeLuna. Here. Trustee Baldini. Here. Trustee Iverson. Here. Trustee Goff. Here. Trustee Dodd. Here. And Trustee Baker. Here. All right. So now we have the a pledge of allegiance. Is it all right if I call on a fac a, a not a faculty a staff member to lead us? I can lead my I don't know actually but Ms. Roger are you an American citizen are you allowed to do this <laughs> I, I am not an American citizen um, but I'm hoping I will be in my time here all I, right I then we'll, we'll we'll make it if we'll we'll, we'll make, let you do this then <laughs> would you please would you please lead us in the pledge of allegiance <laughs> I, I, I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag. I say to the United States, States of America, America. To the, to the republic for which it stands one, one nation, nation under god and indivisible with liberty and justice for all thank you it's too fast for me uh, well you, you got to get it right before we'll let you fit the official or so <laughs> okay moving along and we are now moving to the adoption of the agenda i think we did have one item um it was i believe it was 9.2 catherine did we get a final document that we could move into consent oh we do have uh, uh trustee de luna's changes to look at Okay, so okay. I have uploaded those, so we'll keep that as a separate. Okay, we'll just keep it as that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. In that case, we do not need to make any changes. So unless anyone else has anything that they need to adjust, and we can adopt by consensus. Okay. So now moving along then into public comment for closed session items. At this time, the board will devote a total of up to 15 minutes to hear comments regarding closed session agenda items. Individual comments will be limited to three minutes. Do we have any uh, individuals wishing to make comment on closed session items? Uh, no, I have seen no public comment. All right, then. We will be moving into closed session now, then we expect to, well, we will be returning no later than 6 p.m. And our items for closed session are conference with legal counsel, potential litigation, one case, public employee discipline, dismissal and release, conference with real property negotiators and conference with labor negotiators and public employee evaluation and trustee dodd will be recusing himself from participating in the real property negotiation item trustee baker we're coming yes. back or you're coming back at 5 30. i think oh, at I 5 30. Oh, okay yep, yep. We will be back at 5.30 then. We'll talk fast. <laughs> all right. We will uh, see you all at 5.30 p.m. then. Thank you very much. Returning to public session at 5.35 p.m. And we have nothing to report from closed session. So moving along to public comment. This is for general public comment. This public comment opportunity is governed by the State of California Brown Act. By definition, this is an opportunity to hear concerns, perspectives, and different vantage points. The board is not able under the Brown Act to engage in any level of conversation or discussion, but we look forward to this opportunity to gather community input. At this time, the Board of Trustees will devote up to 15 minutes to review comment to the Board of Trustees regarding any subject not appearing as an agenda item for this meeting, but over which the Board has jurisdiction. 
the public may request that the board place an item related to the business of the district on a future board agenda. No action or discussion will occur at this time on such items. Each comment shall last lo no longer than three minutes. And I know we received one public comment that was submitted in writing, and that is attached to our board docs uh, for reference and for the record. And I believe we have one, at least one person who is planning to speak. Catherine, what can you tell me? Uh, can, oh, oh, I hear it. Good. Uh, this is <laughs> Chris Quinlan. I teach chemistry here on the, the campus. Um, I would like to address the board about the idea of a vaccine mandate for our campus. Um, at our re most recent program coordinator meeting that we had a couple of days ago, uh, we all expressed great difficulty in trying to build the schedule for the next um, coming spring semester because whether we're able to do in-person uh, hybrids like for chemistry to do the labs in person, even if we're doing the lectures online, in order to actually have the physical contact with our students is imperative. We've watched our uh, retention rate and success rates plummet in the in the COVID area and the students have, have routinely said it's because they're not able to come to lab. We cannot offer um, the labs if we are socially distanced due to the lack of vaccines and because of that our students education is suffering. It also is incredibly difficult to try to build a schedule because depending on whether it's all online or a hybrid will dictate what kinds of or who of my adjunct school I'm able to put in classes. Some are online only and which is going to force a last minute um, recruitment to be able to fill some of the positions. Um, and the earlier I know which direction I can go, the better. And so I would request that the board of trustees would uh, seriously consider implementing a, a, a vaccine mandate in order for us to try to get back to the ability to have our classes the way they should be um, uh, delivered. Um, I think, shoot, I lost my notes, so I'm hoping that's it. Oh, wait. Um, no, that's actually, I think, everything I had for, for my notes. Uh, but again, thank you for the time, and I hope you will consider this and make a decision uh, sooner than later so that we can build our, our schedule and serve our students to the best of our ability. That's, Thank that's you. It. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any other public comment? Uh, yes, we do have another. All right. This is Josh Hansen. Uh, hello, I'm Josh Hansen. I'm the faculty chair for science and engineering. Um, I want to also echo what Forrest said. He spoke to the program coordinators, um, and I've been speaking to science and engineering faculty who use a lot of labs and. A lot of them have actually been surprised that the vaccinations have not been required, especially because we are having students coming in because it is so vital to instruction for our science classes. Um, and in order to serve our students, actually allow them to learn science, uh, we need um, safety measures in place so that we can continue giving the same standard of education that we gave before the pandemic. Um, so I wanna echo that this is not just program coordinators trying to create a schedule. This is people in labs trying to teach and trying to, to do a good job. And that's all for me. Thank you very much. Um, any additional comments? I don't see any others. All righty then. So we will then close public comment. And now we're moving on to item seven, which is a public hearing. We're opening up the public hearing with respect to the issuance of tax exempt bonds. Do we have any public comment? I have not received any and uh, we checked with the other office on campus taking public comment and they had also not received any and I see nobody in the, among the attendees with public comment. Okay. Thank you. Then we can close the public hearing. And now moving on to item eight.
which is reports, and 8.2, our Academic Senate report. Dr. Tejada is with us this evening. The floor is yours. Good evening, board members and um, uh, Dr. Kraft and my colleagues. Um, I have a short report tonight. Um, we had a very successful flex day, uh, flex set of days, and um, yeah, we are looking forward to um, a successful semester. There's a lot going on this semester. Um, we also um, attended the Curriculum Institute, and that is the, curric the Academic Center yeah. Curriculum Committee, as well as Dr. Parker and myself. And so um, we enjoyed the training and look forward to applying what we learned both to our uh, curriculum approval process as well as to curriculum development. This concludes my report. Thank you very much, Dr. Tejada. And Dean Harris, are you here with us for the Administrative Confidential Senate report? I am, thank you. Um, can you hear me? I just love that going. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yes, good, wonderful. Um, well, good evening, Board of Trustees, President Kraft, Cabinet, and colleagues. Well, we have reached the beginning of another academic year and another time of relative uncertainty as we continue to ride out the pandemic. It's uh, it, not that long ago, we were expecting to have this meeting, hold this meeting uh, in person, but uh, alas, we give it one more time. Members of the Administrative Senate have been working hard over the summer, preparing for this year, preparing to serve the students. This academic year is looking to be a year of big change for Napa Valley College with a variety of personnel transitions, the administration, faculty, and staff that have come upon the campus in relative short order. The Administrative Center is looking forward to working with our faculty and classified professional colleagues to advance the mission of preparing our students for tomorrow. And as a group, we will be working on a variety of initiatives to enhance the campus in general, to continue the accreditation process, and to create a campus atmosphere that is healthy, safe, welcoming, and creates an environment success. We look forward to another successful academic year, and that concludes my report. Thank you very much. And do we have President Texan with us from the Associated Students of Napa Valley College? Yes, good evening. Good evening, trustees, Dr. Kraft, college administrators, faculty, and the college community. ASMDC completed their leadership training at the retreat this past weekend. We were joined by Chief of Police Amber Wade for conflict resolution training, Manager Benjamin Quesada regarding bylaws and the Brown Act, and Parliamentarian Dave Mazzara regarding Robert's rules and how to run a meeting. We were lucky to be served lunch by Pat Burke from our very own culinary department. The, the menu was very delicious. And during our retreat, we were able to discuss uh, a few priorities and um, discuss our top five priorities moving into the year. The, those top five priorities being events, mental health advocacy, student success, COVID advocacy, and, uh, and assisting on-campus services. We truly want our students to experience a well and proper college life this semester with students actually being on campus. Lastly, we met with Nancy Klein to work on our bylaws. ASMVC is partnering with the Welcome Center, Basic Needs Center, and Student Health Office with Welcome Week or Welcome Days being next week on Tuesday and Wednesday from 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. We would like to emphasize the Office of Student Life and the, and the programs we have to offer and have this opportunity to meet our students. During this event, we will, we will also be promoting the vaccines as a mobile vaccine clinic from St. Helena Hospital is stopping by on both days. We welcome students both online and in person to not only learn about what the, student, the Office of Student Life and Welcome Center has to offer, but also to get their vaccine if they have not already. Throughout last week and in this week, ASMBC has been actively planning for our future events, including Club Rush and Constitution Day, which takes place Friday, September 17th. We're still exploring whether we can have these events on, camp or, excuse me, on campus or organize a hybrid event. This summer has, has been busy not only with selecting and finding members interested in ASMBC, but also with planning and reorganizing as we move to become more established uh, as excuse me, we moved to become a more established and professional organization. We are more than excited to have students back on campus this fall semester. This concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Texan. 
All right, then. Um, the Classified Association report from Valerie Mull, President, I believe she's not here, but her report was submitted and is available through Board Docs. So moving on then to 8.6 Classified Senate report, President Martin Schumacher, are you here with us? I don't believe he's here. All righty, if he shows up, we'll let him in. In the meantime, moving on to 8.7, Faculty Association Report, Christy Iwamoto, President. I believe I saw her name pop up somewhere. Yes, I am here. How are you tonight? Good evening, board. And I have a comparatively short report tonight as well. I uh, just wanted to let you know that uh, in the last month, I, I attended the CTA, California Teachers Association, President's Conference, as well as the Asian Pacific American Labor Association uh, had their big convention. And so I attended that. That was held by the AFL-CIO and uh, uh, had uh, Asian Pacific representatives from all the unions in the country. So that was really fun. Um, normally, they would have had it in Las Vegas, but instead we had it on the lovely city of zoom and so it was um, it was a very nice conference though and i learned a lot um i wanted to thank my colleagues forrest quinlan and josh hansen for uh speaking in public comment tonight i uh, did want to mention that uh, cta has released a statement that they're in favor of keeping our educators and our students safe uh in all instances and so um you know that's really important to, um and it's it's really important as part of the larger picture of how we safely and best serve our students, right? I think a piece of that is is getting everybody vaccinated. Another piece of that is also, um, I do think we need more surveys. I think we need to ask our students what they um, what they need to feel safe and what they prefer. I know that we did. Uh, Dr. Parker and I talked about this recently. We had um, a student survey. Um, last February, I believe it was January, February, where we had, you know, students came out about half and half, about 54% or so wanted in-person classes, 46% wanted uh, online classes, um, you know, and Dr. Parker pointed out and rightly so that was before the vaccinations became readily available. But I do think that well, perhaps the results of that survey are outdated. What that necessitates is another survey. I think we do need to take the temperature of our students and keep asking them what they need from us in order to feel safe and what they want in their classes because we have to we have to change with the changing times and the times seem to change a lot more often than we remember them changing and so you know we have to be able to like like uh uh Dean Harris said we have to pivot and we become experts at that. But I do think that also means open communication and constant communication between administration, faculty, staff, students. And uh, that is my report and ready for a new year. Glad we're all back. Thank you so much for that, Ms. Iwamoto. Yes, all this pivoting and I, I never learned to spot, so that's why I'm dizzy. So uh, let's see. Now we're moving on to uh, general information, 9.1 President and Cabinet Report. So Dr. Kraft. Hi, how are you? I've got a couple things that I, I want to say. So um, thank you first for uh, the faculty and staff very successful session of summer and administrators and everybody who just kind of dug in. Um, we we pulled off a very nice um, summer session with pretty good weather. Um, you know, no fires right on top of us and all the good things that I, I was hoped that, that would happen. Um, thanks. A couple thank yous. Academic Senate, thank you. Um, VP Sarah Parker, Senate President Eileen Tejada, who worked with me also to develop the final IEPI treatment document for this $250,000 grant that's coming in. Very excited about that. Um, to first, first VP um, of the Academic Senate, uh, Dr. Jim McGowan, for his leadership over the summer and continuing leadership in the, in the um, accreditation process. Thank you very much, Jim and um, Robin Warnall, of course. Um, Krista Trujillo, a great flex day, a lot of coordination to make those kinds of things happen. So um, I, I was very gratified to see so many folks online and, you know, and talking. We had our 
our virtual coffee um, and, and worked. Um, again, it takes a lot of folks from all, all different aspects, but it was a, a very, very nice day. So thank you there. Um, not to uh, you know, uh, leave out um, student um, support and, uh, and uh, affairs, um, Oscar DeHaro and Robert D'Arcangelo, Dean, um, did a wonderful new student um, convocation. And I'm sure that there are, there's a little bit of conversation on that, so I don't want to steal too much thunder, but very well done. Um, the, my final piece is on a, the presidential transition, and I want to comment quickly on that. Um, the, during the summer session, I um, announced to the college my intention to um, retire in the spring of 2022, this coming spring. Um, as you know, my current contract runs through 2023, but as, as I've shared, major medical issues and challenges with my family and, and a member of my family, um, my choice became pretty clear. So between support for my family during this time and um, and my obligations here at the college, I, I felt like the, that that choice was was um, easy for me to make, even though it's difficult, um, you know, to move away from so many projects and activities. I want to thank the board for um, its great support and understanding on on this point, and also I'm very assured. That, that there's a great transition plan in, in play and, and um, Trustee Baker, you know, I'm sure has some comments on that as well. Um, I want to um, ensure everybody that, uh, you know, in, in firmly in the saddle, um, that, you know, my intention is to um, continue until my successor is named in the early spring. So we'll see what, what that, what that um, has to offer. Um, I think maybe um, if, if if you want to wait, you can hold comments, Jennifer, or or you can do that now. Either way, it's up to you, and or I can go to the rest of my report. Um, whatever works for you. <laughs> okay, let's 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 uh, skim skim through the report in a way, and then we can back back and in, in with that um, foundation update. And I do not see Jessica yet. Yes, she's there. Are you there? Okay, Jessica, hi. Um, hi. Um, thank you for joining us. Hi. Hi, thank you. Good evening, trustees. Good evening, Dr. Kraft. And we have a lot going on at the foundation right now. One of the things I know I talked about in previous reports is that we're doing a strategic plan and we're a good way through the planning process. We hope to have our retreat the end of September is what we're looking at. Simultaneously, as we're doing this strategic plan and taking a hard look at our mission, our vision, our goals, we also decided to do a rebrand of the foundation. So to look at our logo and all our materials and how we can update that to more ac accurately reflect who we are and what we do. So we've, we're working with a graphic designer that's um, also a professor at California College of the Arts. So he's in education and has been really great and working with us through the process. Um, additionally, we have our President Circle Major Donor Giving Society. We've been talking with Dr. Kraft about it and ways that we can re-engage a lot of the foundation donors that were a part of the Friends campaign in the past and not just connect them with the foundation, but with the college and also with college leadership. So hoping that we can hold events. We have a few ideas for events in the fall um, and we'll have more news about those, hoping that we can schedule them if COVID is allowing us to. Uh, we have a couple new, well, we have some new scholarships. We have a new one that was made by Yvonne Chester. It's a social justice to foster systemic equality scholarship. So it's the first scholarship of that kind that we have. Um, also, Jenny and Ray Serku contributed a sub substantial amount to add to their scholarship. Finally, we have an alumni program that we've been talking about for quite some time. And we've been meeting with HR and public affairs and marketing to kind of look at the best way to track alumni and then how we can roll that into a program um, to stay in touch, to engage them, and if appropriate, you know, reach out for fundraising purposes. So that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Um, I believe we're joined by doctors Robin Warnall and uh, Jim McGowan tonight for uh, a accreditation update. 
Uh, yes, I am here. I don't think Jim could make it, but we're kind of okay. tag teaming and it's my month. So here I am. So uh, good evening board. And I'm here to provide your monthly update on accreditation and the comprehensive review that is currently underway. So uh, Catherine, if you could please advance the slide. Thank you. Um, at last month's meeting, uh, faculty accreditation co-chair Jim McGowan described a refinement to our accreditation review process and our intent to incorporate an additional layer of review into the drafting process via an, an, an accreditation summer review team, which you see referenced here in the first bullet point. Uh, working with constituent group leaders, we formed a team comprised of faculty, classified staff, and administrators to provide feedback on the third draft of responses to the accreditation standards. The team met four times between July 15th and August 5th and provided valuable feedback. Um, the team provided three types of feedback. They provided suggestions for refining the responses. They identified areas for improvement of MBC practices. And they also conveyed general support for the statements made in the ICER. So the key takeaway is that the accreditation summer review team provided valuable contributions to the ICER draft and the final product will have benefited from the engagement of those team members. Uh, while Jim and I are now working on the fourth drafts of some standards, we are still awaiting second drafts of two sections of the report, and those are for 3C and 3D. Um, for those of you who don't think about the standards on a daily basis and might not be uh, familiar with those sections of the report, uh, I will tell you that they pertain to technology resources and financial resources. And the delayed drafts reflect recent losses of administrators within those two areas. The Accreditation Steering Committee will review the fourth drafts of the ICER over the next two months. Their first meeting for review is tomorrow when they will offer feedback on Standard 1. The draft of standard 4C will come to the board for review next month. 4C pertains to the governing board and our timeline provides multiple opportunities for review of 4C by the board. So first is next month, then in November as part of the review of the whole ICER, which is structured as a first reading for you all in November for the whole ICER. Um, then again in December when the board is expected to take action on the report. The campus review of the fifth draft is slated for October. And one final piece of information that isn't listed on the slide here is that the due date for the ICER is December 15th. Um, it is due to the ACCJC by then. And our timeline aligns with that due date as the board approval is anticipated on December 9th. That is my report. Thank you, Robin. And, um, and I have a quick, just a quick uh, yeah. comment slash question for uh, Dr. Warnall. I'm just wondering, you know, since we have ha had quite a few changes in administration and we're anticipating new ones, um, if there are any issues that are coming up that you're concerned about, um, you know, if I'd rather see those sooner than later. Uh, I know that we've got because you know when we get when we get the final report we, we're we approve it and all but it, once we get down to that deadline we wouldn't be able to make any changes so um, I don't I just want to make certain that, that we stay on top of things and um, if uh, I, I know we've got Trustee Deluna is on the steering committee so if there's anything that she needs to bring back to us as a whole that we would want to move uh, more closely um on or more quickly on just please make certain that that she knows that to do that <laughs> yeah, so, uh, trustee deluna is involved in the uh, accreditation steering committee so she will be part of the um review um, beginning of standard one tomorrow as i mentioned there so um you know it, it's um this has been kind of a learning process for everyone and you know the word pivot has already come up at least a couple of times so, you know, the, we're doing the review during this time of pivoting. And so it's no um, wonder or, you know, surprise that we're having to pivot along the way. So, um, yeah, so Jim and I are working closely with Ron and other um, soon to come on board administrators to uh, address particularly those two areas where the second drafts are still pending. Um, and that's what one of the reasons that, um, you know, Jim and I have 
um, stepped in and taken a little um, maybe, uh, more involved uh, uh, writing load uh, for the ICER. Um, so I have no um, concerns about our ability to meet, meet, meet the deadlines and, and get the drafts ready for review um, by the campus community um, and the board, um, you know, by October. So we're, we're folding all of all of that in. And um, I guess this is putting at least one of the administrators who's who's attending the meeting here tonight uh, on notice that I will be in touch probably next week uh, about that. So yeah, and, and I think we'll, um, we'll adjust our uh, monthly updates to that effect if there are any concerns that um, come up. So we'll, we'll keep you apprised and as well as the um, accreditation steering committee. Thank you so much. Thank you, Robin. And um, public affairs and communication, Holly has a, a bit of an update for us. I do. Good evening, trustees, colleagues, and community members. On behalf of myself and our digital marketing and communication specialist, Ali Schull, I would like to give you a brief update on some of our current student communications as we begin the fall semester. Um, can you click on that link for us, Catherine? Thank you. Additionally, as you know, we kicked off the design process for the new website in mid-June. And at the last board meeting, I shared the preliminary wireframes with you. And tonight, I'm going to give you a sneak preview of the homepage design. Next slide. So I want you to know that we don't make decisions arbitrarily. Sometimes we try things out. Sometimes we throw things at the wall and see if they stick. But we generally try to make decisions that are based on student feedback and research. This past spring, Napa Valley College had the opportunity to participate in the National Media Preferences Survey. And this information really helps us understand our students' media and communication preferences and ensure that we are meeting their needs in key areas. We'll be participating in the fall 2021 survey as well. What you see here is that students prefer different kinds of communication depending on the information that we are providing them. Next slide. So while that last slide showed you how, how students want us to communicate with them, this slide shows how they prefer to communicate with us. I don't expect you to get all of the little uh, copy there, but just to give you an idea that we really are interested in knowing what our students want and, and then trying to adjust our communications and make sure that we are communicating with them in a way that is the most effective. Next slide. So that was just an example of um, the survey is actually probably about 100 pages long and there's lots of information. But our student communications generally focus on four areas, support, success, access, and well-being. Next slide. So each week, um, Allie in my department, she emails the Friday Extra, which is our weekly student communication to every student enrolled in each semester. And the content in the Friday Extra, as well as in our social media, is all about what students need to know. So what do they need to know and what kinds of things are we communicating? This is just a few examples here, but we're letting them know that we have free groceries available, laptops and hotspots that they can borrow, and mental health support. Next slide, please. We also do some paid campaigns, and these are just a few quick examples that we um, did to support our fall enrollment. Again, with Allie's leadership on these, what you'll see, and you, again, you can't read all of the numbers, but that we are really tracking these. We're looking at the click-throughs and the responses and the engagement to make sure that what we are doing is effective. So this first campaign was about finding your fit, supporting transfer, certificate, and career education, as well as financial aid and free tuition. Next slide. This next campaign focuses on starting or restarting college and was in Spanish and English. Next one. And this one is a combination of the first two messages. Go to the next slide, please. So in addition to developing our own campaigns, we also work closely with the chancellor's office. The I Can campaign was developed with a significant amount of research and is intended to empower our students and reinforce the belief that they can follow their dreams and their passion and realize their full potential. We are customizing the assets and running the campaign in English and Spanish. And this is just one example of many assets that they have provided us, this one focusing on career education. We're also currently working with the Chancellor's Office on two projects that showcase the college, a video that focuses on our viticulture 
and Winery Technology Program, and a story on our LGBT degree, both in the context of the Chancellor's vision for success. Next slide, please. So the website, we are redesigning the website based on our audience, students, and what they need to know. We're basing our design and our navigation decisions on analytics and survey, and we are reviewing all the content to determine what needs to be public facing and what needs a refresh. And now I'm going to ask Catherine if she can pull this up. I think we have to close this out and pull this up and I'll give you a quick update. What I'm going to show you is a static mock-up of the homepage. So it's not going to have the movement and the vibrancy that the final product will have. It also, the, the photos will change out. So this is really just to give you an idea of how different we, the new site is compared to the old site. So you'll see here the navigation up top is very, very different. Admissions and financial aid programs and academics, student services and resources, career ed, community and about. And we've grouped those together based on reviewing our Google Analytics and seeing how students use information and what they're looking for. There's quick links up at the top that will have a drop down menu with all of the key information. And this imagery will change out. It can be videos. We can have multiple images that will um, change on their own. Can you slide down for me a little bit? Sorry. So we're still, if you keep going all a little bit more of these, so we're still finalizing these, but the idea is that any student who comes to the website will be able to identify himself or herself in these choices and be able to click on that and take the enrollment path directly that is meant for that student. Again, these are not final, they're placeholders, but whether it is a student who's graduating high school, a student returning to Napa Valley College, a current high school student in dual enrollment, we make it very, very easy. You can go down again. Um, you've heard about our meta majors. These also are placeholders. The exploration pathways have still not been finalized. But what we did was we took one of the sample plans and simply plugged that in to be able to provide an idea of what this would look like. So we will be developing icons once we finalize the, the, the exploration pathways. And we'll be able to use those on print, print collateral and other places as well. But these, each one of these, as you click on them, the different pathway will come up and there will be a video or a photo and then more information. You can slide down again. These are three just, um, again, placeholders, if you will, because this content can change out as often as we want. And the idea is that we can focus in and highlight any program, activity, thing that we currently want to focus on at the college. These can be imagery or videos. And you go down a little bit more. Um, why choose NBC? We have a couple of reasons why you want to come to Napa Valley College, focusing on guaranteed transfer, our NBC promise and our career ed. And again, we can add those, change those, etc. Spotlights are some of the student profiles that we have currently on our newsroom site, really celebrating the diversity of our students. This is an example that shows a current student, a student who graduated this past year, and a student who graduated in uh, 2012. Bit. Feeding through um, news and then events, and then the very bottom, so picture, and we go back down and all the key links. So that gives you a quick idea. I'm going to just click on one other quick page and then we're done. Okay, so this is just a sample of what at the top navigation, if you click on one of those pages, what something might look like. So this is admissions and financial aid. And I'll just scroll you down briefly. Again, making it easy for different kinds of students to find the information they need. You can keep scrolling, please. Um, the application process, very simple. Your five steps, resources, paying for your education. What's the cost, financial aid, tuition fees, we're here to help, already been accepted. So all the information is right there and it's designed in a way that is gonna make it very easy for students to find the information they need. So I am very excited about this. Um, I think we have accomplished a lot in a month and a half and we still have a lot to do, but I wanted to give you a, a taste of where we are going. So thank you very much for your time tonight. Looks great, thank you. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, Harley. I know the board, and we and we we were taking a little time with this because the board mentioned this last year as something that you really wanted to be updated on and and keep more abreast. So we're we're I appreciate that um, Holly's doing such a good job and it's coming along. Um, technology update 
Um, our newest vice president, uh, Roger Clegg, um, vice president of institutional technology, I believe is with us. He um, is. And thank you, Roger. And um, will give us an update. And um, as you as you know, Roger is a, a member, newest member of cabinet a, as well. So welcome, Roger. Uh, good evening, trustees, uh, President Croft. Thank you very much. And to everybody else out there that's joining us this evening. I have a fairly short update uh, this evening, five key items. Uh, but first off, before I get on to those uh, key items, I just want to share um, with the board and everybody out there um, that my team and I made it quite clear just after I arrived that as we run into the new semester, we are making our students and their access our absolute number one priority. All of the other things that we are doing are secondary to that. Uh, and our second immediate priority is making sure that the classrooms that are required for teaching and learning in this fall semester are available, ready and working and properly supported. So into the items that I just want to give you a little bit of heads up and notice on. First and foremost is IT staffing. Uh, we're a small team of 15 people theoretically. Uh, at the moment we have four vacant positions. We have one full-time position which is only uh, staffed three days a week at the request of that individual. So you can see we're a little bit below par in terms of uh, the numbers of pairs of hands that we have available to support uh, everybody out there. <coughs> Excuse me. Second item I want to touch on is hardware. Um, we've had some problems with uh, servers and voice systems before I arrived, um, and the hardware has been physically fixed and it now works. However, we did lose a number of key scripts um, and other data which we are in the process of rewriting. That is very labor intensive. Unlike plugging a new hard disk in, which is fairly straightforward, um, rewriting the scripts uh, that we lost on those hard drives is labor intensive. But we expect to see all of that completed within the next week or 10 days. Software. Um, because of the issues we had with hardware, we lost some of our software uh, information configurations uh, and uh, some of the stuff on, on the servers. In addition to that, uh, we still have Windows Vista and Windows 7 on a surprisingly large number of our PCs, desktop units, uh, out at the students and with some of the staff, I'm sad to say. And it is our clear intention, because of the risk associated with no longer supported software by Microsoft, it is our intention to upgrade those systems that can be upgraded to supported software versions. Uh, or alternatively, if they can't be upgraded, it will be our intention to replace those systems uh, by the end of this uh, upcoming semester. Uh, classrooms. All of the classrooms which we understand to be uh, earmarked for use in this fall are ready to go. We are going to have a final check and switch everything off because, uh, as you know, you switch things off and you switch them back on. Sometimes they don't come back on. So we're going to do one final check over the, the weekend and early part of next week. Um, students, item five, students. Some of our students have been having access problems uh, primarily related to the hardware and software issues uh, that I've already mentioned. Um, we are fixing every student's access to services and systems on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, and we are making sure the underlying software, and there have been some communications issues between one database package and another database package as a result of the failures we had. We are in the process of fixing all of that, um, but it is our aspiration that every student should have access to uh, a system and to our infrastructure, our network and data by the time they start school. That's all of the points that I want to share uh, about technology. I would just share a point about me uh, for everybody out there, for the board, um, for uh, Dr. Craft, and for everybody else, including the students out there. I have an open mind, I have an open heart, and I have an open door. Please feel free to come and visit with me at any time that you like uh, and pick my brain and I will share with you as much as I possibly can about where we're taking technology. And one final thing, I do know the Pledge of Allegiance. I just got a bit steamrolled. 
<laughs> thank, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I'd be happy to answer questions or just reach out to me and I am there for you. Thank you. I would have called you sooner if you had said you had an open wallet, but I decided <laughs> you didn't include that one. So we'll just you know kind of move along. <laughs> thank you, sir. Um, we have um, a strategic enrollment um, planning update with Dr. Sarah Parker, and um, she's got some good things to share with us. Yes, and I'm going to ask Catherine if you don't mind opening up those slides. They're great. Uh, good evening, Board of Trustees. I, I want to open before I jump into my three slides here by expressing my gratitude to the many individuals who helped with the preparation, organization, and participation in an extremely successful two days of flex activities that have taken place these last two days. A really great way to start this new academic year. Um, okay, so I'm going to share with you a snapshot of fall enrollment numbers tonight, starting here with this slide. I'm also going to put these numbers in a larger context and outline some steps I believe we can and should start to take to reframe our discussion around enrollment. Across California and nationally, college enrollments are down. Nationally, more than 65% of total undergraduate enrollment losses occurred at community colleges. We can make some educated guesses at their reasons. For example, we know that many students have canceled or delayed college plans due to work and or family care obligations. The cost of college remains a factor for many students. And there are a variety of challenges related to online education. Enrollment in programs that are harder to translate into online education, such as non-credit courses, the arts, kinesiology, have been impacted more than other areas on our campus. And there's also our local context, such as a significant impact to the hospitality industry and demographic shifts that, as you know, are also affecting our local public schools. Some analysis provided to me by our research office over the summer shows that COVID particularly impacted enrollment numbers among our first generation college students, where we saw a 9% decline in 2021 as compared to a steady increase that had characterized the prior five years. This also aligns with state data showing larger declines at community colleges among low income and students of color. On the left hand chart in front of you, you see lines that are tracking fall 2019 in blue, 2020 in orange and 2021 in red. We currently have approximately 15% fewer total enrollments this fall as compared to the same day in prior years. I just want to put a quick thank you out to senior Bob Vanderveld who maintains this daily update for me. Through uh, careful attention over the last weeks, we have made adjustments to our schedule to cancel low enrolled classes and add sections where we had unmet student demand. Our classes are over 75% full college wide and you can see in the chart on the right in this sense, we are tracking very closely with the last two fall semesters. We are very focused right now on how our campus services and instructional efforts can address some of the likely COVID factors that I described to you. There are also a number of areas of enrollment growth and strength for us as we look ahead. I shared at our June meeting that we will have an increased number of dual enrollment students in the 21-22 year and there's still more interest in CCAP opportunities. We routinely develop responsive programming, such as creating new courses and degrees or pursuing grants like the transportation and distribution logistics pre-apprenticeship training that came to the board last month. Initiatives like Degrees When Due and Pathway Work, you saw the, the website with the, uh, the vision of what pathways could look like. Tuesday's amazing new student convocation. These are ongoing and they offer us opportunities to more seamlessly integrate with our K-12 and four-year and industry partners. And of course, the new website. Over the year that I've been in this role, I've shared information each semester about enrollment declines. And I've noted that these aligned with broader trends based at least in part on COVID-19. That said, recent declines in enrollment are also part of a broader and longer term trend at Napa Valley College. And you can see this on the next slide. 
This summarizes full-time equivalent students from 2011 to 2021. The total FTES on our submitted 320 report for 2021 was 4,005 students. Next slide, please. From my vantage point, I think that we're at a moment where we can and should reset our thinking about enrollment. I'm interested in these questions. What enrollment target will best serve our community? As a community funded district, how can we best ensure that we're responding to the needs of our community? How can we ensure that access is complemented by student retention, persistence, and equitable success outcomes, for example, as a 4,000 FTES college? I intend to address these questions this year by taking the following approach, and the bullets are there in front of you by starting with a comprehensive review of enrollment, persistence, retention, looking at our vision for success and student funded funding formula data, as well as local demographic and workforce data. Establishing a process and an annual timeline for setting community-centric enrollment targets for NBC as a community-funded district, ensuring that our enrollment conversations are integrated with college planning and budget processes, involving all constituency groups in this very important conversation and ensuring that we are guided by mission vision and strategic plan goals so i'm suggesting uh, suggesting a bit of a paradigm shift maybe i should use the word pivot tonight uh, instead of evaluating this fall in comparison to prior years which we will obviously still do but to also think about where we are as compared to where we want to be and to define where we want to be based on our analysis and plan accordingly. So I look forward to working with members of the campus community on this, and I will continue to bring you information about our work during my reports. Thank you, Sarah. Um, yeah, go ahead, Jennifer, I'm sorry. No, 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 just good, good, this is all good. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is, and that's what I was gonna say. It's, it's you know, it, not to be too, um, too casual on it, but, but the reality is that this is a really great conversation for the board to be looking at early on in the cycle because you know from a policy side and fiduciary side you have a lot of input here that that's critical um so the, the sequence that sarah and i've talked about and she is taking the lead on is to present this kind of overview to you tonight get to work then with our constituencies and in, in the trenches so to speak with with faculty staff and administrators and, and a lot of research and then come back to you um, later on with some policy implications. So very excited about that, Sarah, great job. Um, nice nice and clear. And I think that we're, um, we're off and running on a really good uh, tack here. So thank you. Um, human resources update, thank you, Catherine, um, for uh, Vice President Charo Alran. Thank you so much. I have a very short report, but exciting report. I am pleased to announce that our payroll unit um, has joined the Human Resources Department. Um, so if you look at their acronym with payroll, human resources, and training development, I think the new departmental name is PART. Um, we'll play around with that and make sense of that, but I think that's what we're gaining, um, gaming for. Um, I want to take this opportunity to welcome Imelda Basco and Donnell Cotton to the HR training development um, family. Um, additionally, the function of workers' compensation will be facilitated by the HR office with a strong collaboration and continued work with Senior Director Matt Christensen and his team. Um, I also want to thank Arissa Pook, who has worked diligently with me over the past month um, in the transition of payroll coming over to Human Resources. Additionally, this is that time of year, folks. This is that time of year to start reviewing all of your benefits. Open enrollment for benefits begins September the 20th through October the 15th.
This is also a good time for everyone to think about, did I update my address when I moved? Do I have my beneficiary set? So if you have any questions, please contact Isabel Mustafanajad in the HR office. Um, more information regarding open enrollment will be released soon for the campus community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chara. Um, student Affairs update, Oscar Tahara was with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, good evening. Uh, I, have, I have a couple of sharings for you. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we received some great news last week uh, in that Napa Valley College has been awarded, has acquired a new, uh, very, very competitive uh, five-year talent search grant. It's, it's, uh, it's a grant from the Department of Education. Uh, it's a five-year grant that amounts to $1.58 million for the five-year period. Uh, and actually, what was a nice, nice surprise is that uh, this came with a $250,000 increase over the amount of the five-year grant that we uh, that we had received that uh, ends this August. Uh, so it's it's a renewal source, but it's also again it's not an automatic. We have to apply for it. And we have to be very, very strategic with our goals and our objectives, and uh, and so we succeeded. Uh, this grant, uh, for those of you who are not aware of it, this educational counselors grant is uh, what's called a pre-college ser services grant. The idea is that it's, it, it, it influences a college-going uh, mindset uh, for the 668 students that it serves. Uh, it, this grant also does a lot of work with, with parents, and it serves primarily first-generation college students. Um, this grant uh, has been and will now uh, also continue to be uh, at three middle schools, uh, as well as Napa and Village High School. Uh, on the average, uh, the town search program uh, brings in or uh, routes in or uh, assists with bringing in about 65% of a senior uh, uh, cohort to Napa Valley College. Uh, as part of these, these, these grants, these, these federal grants, uh, the college also receives a certain percentage of the grant amount. In this case, it's 8% of what's called direct, uh, direct cost, in, indirect cost which is what the college uses for its, you know, for its phone services, you know, for the space that these programs and staff utilize. And so in this case, uh, the college will receive approximately $148,000 over the five-year period for, for use of, of how the college sees fit. Uh, so I want to acknowledge uh, the social dean, uh, Ramon, Ramon Sanceda, uh, senior dean Patty Morgan, and their illustrious team for the successful grant writing and also because of their grant writing this year, but also the exceptional work that they that they uh, that they performed in the previous five years, we are fortunate to have received this grant once again. The other activity that, that I'm also I'm very happy to, to share about, and, and one that Dr. Kraft has alluded to it, is the new student com communication. Uh, this uh, this last week, uh, sorry, this last Tuesday, we held our second annual new student communication. Uh, we had. 564 students who registered and who RSVP'd with over 400 who actually attended the entire event. Now again, these are new students. These are students that are ready to go, their package, if you will, to start classes uh, as, of, as of tomorrow and the next week. Uh, so they're coming here, there's no question about that. Uh, I asked uh, for, for some data just to share with you on this 564 student uh, cohort. And uh, on the demographics, we have 57 of these students are Latino and Hispanic. 18% of these students, the 564, are uh, white students. 10% uh, are Filipino, uh, and 7% are African American black students, with 2% being Asian students. So again, I want to just place an emphasis on 57% of, uh, of Latino students, because the reality is, in my estimation, this is the population that will be here in Napa College for years to come, given that 80% of high school uh, Latino graduates who go into college attend a community college, so just keeping that in mind. Um, with the 564 students that we had for the convocation, the county of residence, 60% of the students are from Napa County, 32% are from Solano County, uh, Contra Costa and 2% and, uh, from, from Sonoma County, and Contra Costa, Sacramento, and other county or so added up to about 7%. Now, this, uh, this cohort, where they came from, the graduating high schools that this cohort came from, 19% uh, are from Napa High School, the grads from Napa High School, 15% are, uh, are from Vintage High School, 12% uh, come from, from American Canyon High School, 5% uh, from Vallejo High, 5% from Angelo Rodriguez High, 
4% from technology here in, here in Napa, uh, 4% from Jesse Bethel High, 4% for Army High, which is the Leo area, uh, 3% from there, and 3% from St. Helena. There was 12 other high schools that are represented in this <laughs> one against this four student group, and those accumulate for a total of about 15%. Uh, this, this convocation also makes it very special because in this in this instant, uh, this instance this year, we had 32 staff members, faculty, and administrators who participated in the event, uh, either as part of the welcomes or as part of the breakout groups, uh, showing students and sharing with students uh, what new students should should know and how to access uh, federal services. Um, we also what made it great, and, and, and again thanks to Robin's uh, great uh, skill. Uh, we were able to to uh, to receive funding for some of these pro for some of these uh, sort of incentives for our students. For example, the NBC Foundation donated uh, four laptops, which run around thousand dollars each, and these laptops are are uh, raffled uh, to the student attendees, along with five thousand dollars for visa, visa gift cards. So, so the foundation did an exceptional job. We're very appreciative of their efforts. Barnes and Noble, the bookstore, also provided hundreds of dollars in, in school, school supplies. Uh, the Caminos al Exito, our HSI grant we currently have, provided backpacks, stuff with other crucial uh, school supplies. The, uh, the uh, student equity budget also assisted with, with, uh, with vouchers for the bookstore. And there was other campus groups and organizations that donated as resources for incentives for the 564 students that we had. Uh, now, the brainchild of this event is uh, Senior Dean Robin Dar Darcangelo. Uh, when she arrived uh, two and a half years ago, she had this 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 concept that I didn't quite understand when, when she when she shared it with me. And basically, what it is it's this. This is the convocation. This is where we bring together the new students, those that have been sort of signed the dotted line that they will be here at Napa Valley College. And the idea is to provide them with something extra. The extra welcome. The extra the extra hand hand holding. The extra feeling of yes, we want you here at Napa Valley College, and so uh, once again, uh, Robin and her team did an exceptional, exceptional job. Uh, they made it happen again, as well as they did uh, last year. Many of the students, if not most of them, actually had their first contact with Napa Valley College through our what we call our outreach task force, which is. Uh, the staff members that, that participate in, in outreach, both from student affairs and academic affairs uh, at the high schools. And so uh, what, what the outreach task force does is that they provide the student with a pre-enrollment uh, pieces of, of the enrollment, of the registration. Uh, and then this, this convocation sort of ties the, uh, the bow, if you will, on their, on their participation in Apple Valley College. So I want to acknowledge once again, the, the exceptional work, uh, teamwork led by by, by Robin, uh, Chris Farmer, our senior manager, did an exceptional job as well. He's sort of like the, the tag team for for Robin. And I'm going to say assistant, Mayta Mayo, who assisted with the coordination of all these activities and all the uh, workshops and all the whole nine yards that came with it. But uh, I also want to thank uh, wholeheartedly the staff and faculty and the administrators for their participation and their collaboration. And, uh, and I want to thank, uh, with, with, with a special gracias, to Krista Trujillo for her excellent uh, role as the MC. I'm not sure if it's Mrs. Ceremony, but it's but it's the MC. She did an exceptional job. Mm -hmm. And uh, without question, those partners who contributed financially, we couldn't have done, we couldn't have done it with, without you. So I want to thank very, very, very much our Napa Valley College Foundation and especially Jessica Tom Thomason for your contributions and for your collaboration. And so with that, kudos and plaudits to Rhonda Cangelo and her team. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar. The, um, the outflow of, of these kind of events, I mean, we're, we're small but mighty. I mean, a lot, there are a lot of innovative programs that, that come out of student affairs, academic affairs, and all, all areas of the college traditionally, but um, this is another, another um, very good profiled um, event. Um, perhaps we'll enter this as a, an event in one of the uh, annual um, competitions where they're recognized, um, you know, nationally for, you know, kind of breakthrough programs. So maybe Holly and Oscar can deal with that one. Um, thank you. I, I already touched base on, you know, my thank yous and also the transition, um, you know, Trustee Baker that, that we had talked about. So um, I just want to assure that we have a solid team 
and um, I'm uh, I'm handing it over to you. Thank you. And um, before we move on, I uh, just want to thank you, um, Dr. Kraft, for your 10 years of service to Napa Valley College and our community. It's not often that a board of trustees and a president have a decade to work together. So our board is so appreciative of your exceptional leadership, the innovative services and programs, uh, outstanding philanthropic efforts, and deep community connections you've brought to the college. There's your testament to your abilities. And although we all had desired to continue our work through the end of your contract, which would have taken us to end of the 2023 academic year, we understand that your obligation now needs to be redirected as a member of your family is battling cancer. And there will be more opportunities for the board to recognize your service as the semester progresses. I think we're putting together a committee for a parade. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, but we have a lot to accomplish together during this coming semester. And as I think everyone here knows, um, while the board has final approval on all new hires for positions here at the college, the president is our only actual employee. And so this is uh, the only position for which we're actively participating in the full recruitment process. And so we've got a lot to do. And with your intention to retire in January of 22, the Board of Trustees has started the process for recruitment for a new superintendent president. And I've asked Trustee Goff to serve as our hiring committee chair, and she has graciously accepted. And we are committed to receiving input from the college constituencies and our hiring committee chair, Trustee Goff, will be reaching out to the president of each constituency with the questionnaire to solicit from their membership ideas and needs uh, for a new superintendent president. And the information collected will be used in the process of developing the job announcement and throughout the whole recruitment process. And in the meantime, we're starting to work on the job announcement and the call for the hiring committee members will be sent out tomorrow by the Office of Human Resources. And the hiring committee will consist of three members of the Board of Trustees, three members of each constituent group and one student representative. And it is our goal to recruit candidates who will be dedicated to our students and community and show strong support for our faculty and staff and continue to focus also on um, our campuses uh, um, areas that we have said we want to really focus on things like diversity and equity and inclusivity. So the position will be posted early in September and should remain open through mid-October. And during this time, the goal of the hiring committee is to hold its first and second meetings um, very soon as we move that process along. And we expect to conduct first and second interviews in campus forums in November and look forward to appointing a new superintendent president at our December 9th Board of Trustee meeting with a January 2022 start date. So we'll provide opportunities for each constituent group to provide input and update the campus community on this timeline as we proceed. And thank you again, Dr. Kraft, for your service to our community, and we'll be in touch about that parade. Right. Thank you so much. Sounds like we have it well in hand. Thank you. That hey. is all of my report. And thank you, uh, Jennifer. All right. So let's move along. Uh, so that takes us to 10. Wait. All right. 9.2 minutes of the uh, sorry, June June 10th meetings we had we pulled those from our last meeting so that they could be doctored a little bit and now we've brought them back for review and acceptance is and i believe this was just posted late this afternoon so we probably have not none of us had opportunity to take a look at them yet so yes these are changes yeah these are changes proposed by uh trustee de luna so you'll see what, what was previously proposed is shown in strike through. This is what uh, she's proposing to write in here in public comment. And then there's another section later on in reports. Again, the 
removed and striked through and addition would be underlined. Thank you. And uh, it looks like I see uh, Trustee Goff has her hand raised. Trustee Goff. Yeah, I wanted to comment. I, I read these and although I'm not opposed to the wording at all, um, it's very inconsistent. Um, I know in my first year on the board, I contacted um, President Kraft and Catherine and, and kind of made a similar request and was told that that's not appropriate, that the wording on minutes, you know, read a certain way. And if you look at the rest of the minutes, this is really inconsistent wording. So I think we have to decide, are we going to stick with the consistency that we've gotten used to, or are we going to change it up? And in either way is fine. I'm not objecting to um, what's written. I'm just saying we have, we can't put in detail or summary for some comments and some actions and not on others. So I think as a board, we need to decide what these minutes are going to look like. I actually agree with that. Um, I like, see, it looks like Trustee Rios has his hand up as well. So Trustee Rios, did you have a comment? Yeah, it's along the same lines. This is what we got away from now some time ago now, because one, it allowed for people's different perceptions uh, sometimes as to what was said or what was meant. And just the, the detail, we had minutes that were, you know, 10 pages long. <laughs> and that's not the intent of the minutes. The minutes is to record actions that are taken that need to be in the record and we we had i think we had a, a consultant who worked through that with us and uh, we arrived at you know kind of what the minutes are now that that they do record basically what happened and and the actions which we we need to record but we got away from all of this detail um for those you know reasons Mm -hmm. Do we have any other comments or questions from the board? I, I, I also agree with that. And that is kind of where I was hoping we were going to direct this. And it got kind of uh, waylaid a little bit um, in getting back to us. So uh, I, you know, yeah, I agree completely. I don't think it needs to be um, anyone's job to try to, to um, distill what someone else is trying to say. <laughs> so is that, that's one of the reasons why we, we stick with action minutes. And if anybody wants to go and see the details, they can either go to the video or the audio recording or preferably even to a, uh, a print document that is attached in board docs. So we're getting there in terms of reports and other things and i think it also in terms of uh public comment we need to uh to keep that uh simplest as simple as possible so we don't start uh down that path and getting uh, things out of where we're having to take months and months to get our minutes approved and trying to remember who said what and and what were what was their intent again that's the bigger problem is trying to um to just having a, a third party determine what your intent was is is sticky so um so i'm not sure what do we want to do with this particular document if we want to um go ahead and accept it as proposed for now with the understanding that we will move forward going back to our, our our more regular method or if we want to go ahead and strike these and just enlist the names of individuals that commented and rather than going into detail about um, what the uh, topic of conversation was either is fine with me i would prefer that we um of course adopt it they're my my changes my specific um the notes on the on the board reports mine were completely wrong so that's that i really am adamant about adopting um and i think we need to talk about it again um so i would prefer that if if they are not going to be adopted that we talk about it um and what we want to do going forward 
Well, as I said, I'm I'm totally fine to accept them as are as they as the, as they are presented here, and we, to go ahead and get the record complete. And then, um, yeah, I think it would be uh, wise for us, perhaps during our board retreat, to not necessarily revisit the 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 um, the intent and the, and the format of the minutes, but just to clarify what what the uh, because we d we did make the decision some time ago to move to action minutes and so we need to we we really should be keeping these to procedural and um actual actions of the board rather than uh just a list of reports okay. so because that's what the agenda is for <laughs> so any other comments i think uh trustee goff your yeah. yeah um Trustee DeLuna, I'm looking at the original minutes and I can't tell what the objection was. Is there any way we can talk about that? Because I I, I, I don't want to approve the revised. I just think they're out of context or they're they're not in that line. But I'm looking at what the original said and I'm and I'm not understanding your concern about it. Can can you explain that? Which part? Um you said that some of it was wrong. Yeah, my comments were wrong. The, my, the, under what you reported out? Right. At the very end, right? What we're seeing as far as you revised? The, what's on the screen now? Yes. And, the, and what was what, the strike through bit is the part that was originally in the minutes and then the part that is not stricken is um, Trustee DeLuna's uh, um, oh, gotcha. amended version. Gotcha. Yeah. So, Trustee DeLuna, if it was just um, revised to state what you actually reported out on the resolution in support of dismantling systematic racism, would, would that suffice in correcting the minutes for you? Uh, what I requested to be put on there would suffice, yes, which is that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, that I wouldn't have a problem with it is the prior it's the it's the revision up top as far as the comments go that i i have a problem with um because it's just so out of line with what our actual minutes are supposed to do i would be fine with it if it um stated what um is it what christine um said it was essentially the same comments and if we um just put that it's uh, that they commented um, in support of their colleague, then that would be fine with me. But well, again, I, that's that's out I, of out of character. Just saying, um, how is it? Or if we're going to put the same thing that was on there before, but also for hope, it it shouldn't have been done that way in the first place. Is I think the is where we're headed with this conversation is and and um, and part of this has just kind of been. A slow erosion of our our um, our agreement previously that we were going to stick with action minutes and and um, attempt to try to capture people's intent and and uh, what people feel or, th or think is just it is it just becomes a rabbit hole. Um, so yeah, that's what I included in my original message before our meeting. Our last um, meeting um, was that I don't agree that it it can be it is some it is subject to interpretation so we do also have to watch um who is interpreting what is being said because um obviously that changes depending on who's taking the minutes so mm -hmm. there's a lot of different um aspects to this i've taken minutes myself i've been on many boards and um i would i would like to at least see when the decision was made of these action minute guidelines um and then maybe i would understand it better Okay. No, that's fine. Um, I would suggest, I mean, the, the corrections to um, Tristy DeLuna's comments, they're her corrections. So um, if, it's, if it's wrong, then she's the one that knows that. I would suggest we accept that, those changes, um, and otherwise leave the minutes as they, they had been prepared. If you make that a motion, I'll second. I will make that a motion. All right, second. Do we have any further discussion? Um, I, I have a comment as president of the Senate and someone who has to um, also um, 
kind of give guidelines in terms of, of um, minutes. Um, just a caution that the there is no the the comments that were made on these on the meaning that these minutes cover um, the support was explicit and um, so there wasn't it wasn't about guessing it wasn't implicit the the support was explicit and I'm wondering if their comments will be attached to these minutes so that the public understands what happened. Otherwise, it's there's an air of um, trying to make these uh, um, objective when in fact um, it could be read that there it's misleading to just say that Chris, Christine Pruitt commented on her colleague. She didn't just comment on her colleague, she commented on a situation about her colleague. And so I'm just saying that, yes, there is, I, I totally understand about the action minutes, but this could also be um, read as a misperception um, because, again, the support was explicit in relation to a, an action and a situation taken by the board. Um, mm -hmm. So I would caution the board um, that that the minutes not be that as a public we trust um the integrity of the minutes and that by trying to um assert a particular kind of form when um an opinion or a comment is expressing a particular opinion ex explicitly that the minutes also need to reflect that so there's a balance and i i totally i can appreciate um trying to keep that balance Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. I I would suggest that we perhaps revisit the the best format for things like public comment and some of these other things that are not actions, so that they do in some fashion get. Uh, registered at least in the minutes if they're not reported in the minutes because I we do we still want to have the uh, video and audio um, or again anything that's submitted in writing and board docs to be the formal record whereas the, uh, the minutes are supposed to be like the board did this in this case we were not doing anything we were just listening to people and so um, which we we can't comment on and we don't take action on and those things might end up coming back as as uh, future agenda items but we could have pages and pages and pages of public comments if we ever had people just sitting in line at our podium so um i think for right now unless unless well let me just move forward if we have unless we have any other discussion or comments or any changes to our motion we do have a motion on the floor so, um, but I do want, I will make a note that we need to um, readdress or revisit our, our, how we're doing the, the format of the minutes and, and what's, in, what's expected to be in those minutes. So we can, that might be something we can also do in our retreat since we want to not like, get too far away from us on this. So any other comments? Then I will go ahead and call roll call vote. So Trustee Dodd, how do you vote? Yes. Trustee Goff? I'm sorry? Yes. yes. Trustee Iverson? Yes. Trustee Baldini? Aye. Trustee DeLuna? No. Trustee Rios? Yes. Student Trustee Soto Gonzalez. Aye. And I will also vote in the affirmative. So we have our vote passes and with a seven to one. And moving on Trustee then. Could you yes. clarify the, the motion was by Rios? The motion second. was by Rios and was seconded by Baldini. Thank you. And so moving on then to 10.1. And that will be, I believe, Charo's item. 
Yes, for the next two items, 10.1 and 10.2, these are our proposals. The 10.1 is the college's proposal being brought to you um, with the intent to return to the table to continue bargaining with our colleagues in the faculty association. 10.2 um, is being presented by the faculty association, um, their particular art articles that they would like to bargain um, as we return to the table. This is brought to you this go around for information. It will come back next month um, at the board meeting to allow for public comment, as well as to ask the board to approve the district's proposal for, for negotiations and accept the faculty association proposal for negotiations. Thank you. Then um, are we then on to 10.3? Three or ten point or ten point four. The ten point three um, is to allow for public comment. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, do we have any public comments on ten point three? I have not received any, and I do not see any raised hands. All right then. Yeah, I remember when I was looking at this earlier, I'm like, what's the difference? Oh wait, one is public comment and one is approval. <laughs> so now. 10.4, the approval of the 10, sorry, 2021 to 2024 Napa Valley Community College District and Napa Valley College Union of Classified Professionals Agreement. Do we have any public, well, we have to ask, do I have to ask for public comment twice since we did it separate? I know. I guess not. I guess, I mean, unless somebody just rushed in, we don't have anybody. <laughs> so in that case, I can ask for a motion. Move approval. And do I have a second? Second. All right, that was a first from Rios and a second from Baldini. And so, Trustee Dodd, how do you vote? Aye. Trustee Goff? Aye. Trustee Iverson? Aye. Trustee Baldini? Aye. Trustee DeLuna? Aye. Trustee Rios? Aye. Student Trustee Soto Gonzalez? Aye. And I will vote in the affirmative. So that means we have a unanimous a vote to bring this contract through. Yay. Thank you very much. All right. So now we are on to 11.1, it's the approval of consent calendar. Do we have any items that need to be pulled for discussion? None? Move approval. Second, Trustee Dodd. Okay, we have a first from Trustee Baldini, a second from Trustee Dodd. Is there any public comment before I call the vote? Uh, no, I have none, and we I see no hands raised. All right. Trustee Dodd, how do you vote? Aye. Trustee Goff? Aye. Trustee Iverson? Aye. Trustee Baldini? Aye. Trustee DeLuna? Aye. Trustee Rios? Aye. Student Aye. Trustee Soto Gonzalez? Aye. And I will also vote in the affirmative. So that makes our consent calendar go through with unanimous approval. All right. So then we are on to 12.1 resolution of the Board of Trustees of Napa Valley College, Community College District approving the issuance by the California Community College Financing Authority of its student housing revenue bonds in CCD, Napa Valley Properties, LLC, Napa Valley College Project. So series 2021 in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed 150 million for the purpose of financing and or refinancing the acquisition, construction, improvement, renovation, and equipping of a student housing facility located on the campus of Napa Valley College and mm -hmm. certain other matters related there too. Do we have any public comment on this item? I have not received any okay. and I don't see any hands raised. All right, Dr. Kraft, is there anything that we need to know about this before we take action? Do not believe so, unless there are specific questions. I think we're good. I, I have a few few questions, and I don't know, maybe some folks, if you don't mind. Um, sorry, 
I'm on family vacation right now, so I might have some screaming kids in the background. Um, in terms of the budget for the, the house, it is just something I haven't seen in, in a while. And so I just wanted to kind of just recircle back on, on that number. And I'll, I have a few questions. So I'll just answer them. I'll, I'll try to um, ask them slowly. Um, but I also wanted to understand a little bit about the maturity date for the, the bonds and what we're talking about um, for their confirming um i'm reading the resolution that this is a, a revenue bond to so confirming you know what what is the security um there so i believe it'd be the security generated by um, the security um measured against the the revenue generated by the housing project um want to confirm um that there hasn't been any change i'm assuming we would heard this but just to confirm this and for the record uh that there hasn't been any uh, change in conclusions from the scion group uh, with respect to the market of, of student housing, um, even in this, um, you know, I, I don't want to call it post COVID world, but, um, you know, late stage COVID world, I hope, um, any sort of changes in the bond market as well. Um, and then the last piece, uh, which I do want to be a little bit careful on just to, in light of the, the potential, you know, conflict with the, with the Martin group, but just understanding, um, how this money is going to be released and you know, with respect to certain tranches and is there, you know, goals and, and, and how is that, um, how is that money being distributed and, you know, what are the timelines expected for that, that money being, um, uh, the, the timeline for the distribution of that money and effectively, you know, who is the gatekeeper of that? Um, is it, you know, a, a president CEO? Is that Matt Christensen um, facilities? So just, again, sorry for the, uh, so many questions, but just wanted to get them all out. Hey, Dr. Kraft, what can you tell us? Ooh, yeah, well, that was a that was a mouthful, Jeff. Thank you. Um, a couple, a couple. Things. I, I'm, ha I'm happy to happy to repeat. No, no, no. I know. I, like I said, I was trying to just do them a little bit slowly, but no, no, no. I'm happy yeah, to yeah, repeat and, any of those. And there's very little chance of me being able to answer those in the detail in which you you're wanting. I would say two things. This action tonight is a business step that um, in no way um, obligates the board to approve in the future. Um, the res the actual documents that would enable you to get at those questions. So when we, our next step here after tonight is to organize a special meeting where we would address just those questions in great detail with Scion group present, Martin group present, attorney present, and all of those. And we can really dig in. I think I'm with you. Those need to be very transparent, very discussed, and um, at, at length, I think that that would make sense. I don't. I just don't have the the. I'm, I'm way out over my skis, really, on on those. And had I known we were going to do more depth in here, I would have asked. I should have asked maybe the attorney to attend um, this section. This, however, allows the board to move forward to even consider um, um, approving the a, a further um, obligation. And so at our next meeting where we gather, I will we'll post that and um, we have gathered, Catherine got these and we also recorded them, all the things you just talked about. And I'll ensure that we talk um, in, in detail about those and, and many more. Thanks, Dr. Gray. And I apologize. I just prepared oh. this, this morning, this afternoon for the meeting. Normally I do it uh, earlier in the week. Um, if and that we bumped is you out of the meeting so you couldn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I just I, I'm just going to state it for the, the yeah. public record is I, I this is something I think is important to to, to me and because it's just such a, um, a a big deal in terms of uh, the 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 product. So I, I want to be able to I'm trying to be careful of of not overlapping into any areas where there might be a conflict. Mm -hmm. um, but it's important to me, um, and I'm totally welcome to hear any member of the public's objection objections to me participating in, in in those levels of conversation in the topics I just discussed. Um, but um, I, I just want to make sure that I can be a part of that this discussion. If not, I you know, would like to, to know um, if, if there is any sort of objection. I don't think there is, but uh, um, in, in any case, I think in light of your comments and um, I'll wait for any other board questions or comments, but if, if that is the case and that there will be a, a second um, opportunity before we actually go out and, 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 and offer those bonds to the public, um, yeah, I'm, I'm fine to you know support the support the resolution as is. Yeah, that's great, and you, you have the you have the essence of it. This is a, an intermediate step, um, and when we get to the the next step, which is more critical, to have those deeper deeper conversations, we'll address it.
Uh, I'll move from approval. Okay. Can we have a second? Second. Rios. All right. So we have a motion from Trustee Iverson with a second for Trustee Rios to adopt this resolution. And Trustee Dodd, how do you vote? Yes. Trustee Goff? Aye. Trustee Iverson? Aye. Trustee Baldini? Aye. Trustee DeLuna? Aye. Trustee Rios? Aye. Student Trustee Soto Gonzalez? Aye. And then I will also vote in the affirmative. So we have unanimously adopted this resolution, moving one more step down the road toward housing. Okay, so we don't have anything in these other areas. So we're just gonna bump right straight down to board reports, standing committee and other appointments. Uh, DOS report, Trustee Iverson, did you guys meet? Um, we did not meet. Okay. Uh, Trustee Baldini, anything from viticulture and winery? No. Hard meeting scheduled for September 26th. They'll be out of town that day, so I'm asking the Trustee Rios to to cover the meeting for me. Great. Well, thank you. What was that date? The 22nd. 26th. I thought you said 26th. 22nd. 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 Okay. I will check my calendar and confirm with you. Thank you very much. Uh, legislative Affairs, Trustee Goff, anything to report? I do. In addition to working fabulously on our website, Holly Dawson has been very busy keeping up on uh, our legislature. So she sent me a, a note here that I'm going to read for you word for word because I can't say it any better than she wrote it. So <laughs> She wrote to me this afternoon. So there's a lot of support from the legislature for higher ed and community colleges in particular. And if you have read anything in the news, you guys all know this. So at the state level, the governor signed the post-secondary education trailer bill on July 27th, which includes historic investments to expand college access and affordability. Yay! The state legislature will reconvene from summer recess next week. So hopefully there will be movement. AB 927, the baccalaureate degree program, is on the Senate Appropriations Committee agenda for August 16th, so keep your fingers crossed. September 3rd is the last day to amend bills, and September 10th is the last day for any bill to be passed. And again, if you've watched the news, you know that they're just cramming like mad. October 10th is the last day for the governor to sign or veto a bill. At the federal level, Senate Democrats released a budget blueprint which includes a number of higher education policy priorities, including two years of tuition-free community college, an increase in the maximum Pell Grant award, expansion workforce development and job training programs, and new grants to implement retention strategies to reverse disenrollment trends stemming from the COVID-19 pandemic. That's good news, Dr. Parker. While this is encouraging, these are only proposals at this time. So uh, along with the rest of us, uh, Ms. Dawson is tracking it and she's going to keep us in the loop. So once again, I want to thank her uh, for always being on top of it and keeping us up to date with what's happening. And that is my report. Thank you. And thank you, Holly. I don't know when you sleep. All right. Let's see. Um, Audit and Finance Committee. We were supposed to have had a meeting this last uh, earlier this week, but it was canceled um, with the uh, changes in staffing in our finance department. There have been a few things that have been holding this process up, but Dr. Kraft is working on it. And we're hopefully going to get that uh tied up with a nice neat bow within the next two weeks. So uh, real property has not met. Um, McPherson and Ed Shankors, those are at the end of the year. So good for right now. And let's see. So foundation board of directors, um, Trustee Iverson, anything to add from uh, uh, Jessica's report? No. Alrighty then. An uh, accreditation steering committee. Um, it sounds like there's something coming up soon, but D uh, Trustee DeLuna, have you had anything to report since our last meeting? No, just the, that we're going to have a meeting soon. Good. We're very excited to hear about that. All right. So future agenda items and requests. Uh, I'm going to pull up our little 
log right there. Don't think anything's moving forward right now. I do want, um, I actually would like to, um, at a future meeting, I'm not sure in terms of, you know, school scheduling and all that other stuff, when, when would be a, an appropriate time also, since we're still waiting on the FDA to actually get off the dime. But, um, I, I would like to bring back the issue of a potential vaccine mandate. I think that we, well, like I said, hopefully the FDA will get busy. Um, but so, yeah, uh, I'm not sure timing wise in terms of uh, getting a catalog of classes together when, when that would be wise to readdress the, th the things that we just adopted. Of course, <laughs> the minute we adopted them, they kind of went out the window anyway. Um, but um, in terms of masking, but uh, I know that we we had only planned to have that in place through fall anyway, so um, and spring will be here before we know it. So uh, I, I like that idea too, uh, Chair Baker, especially just building for the contingency. You know, once the FDA does yeah. does a bit, I think and just we're, we're ready to go. I'm sorry. I would suggest that we um, tr let's let's shoot for next month. All right. Uh, I don't think do it's it. too early. There's a lot of action in the state, as we kind of all know, at least the, the, the team that's at work on it. So we should have a lot of information and at the very least we could address the issue. And mm -hmm. Does anybody else have any other things that they want to bring to the front? I do want to um, talk a little bit about our agenda for our uh, retreat. And I'm not sure when when is when does that need to be posted? Because it's end of next wait, is it two weeks from now? No. Two weeks from Saturday, correct? Right. Yes. So, so we would need to have the agenda posted by Tuesday, th Wednesday of that week. Twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. Okay. Wait. Oh yeah, because it's a special meeting. That's right. Ooh. All right. So then, um, if anybody has anything that they would like to bring to that agenda, um, I know Catherine's been making notes of different things that have been coming up. A couple things that came up just this evening in terms of uh, discussing um, the um, procedural things and communication things, and uh, of course now we have to. Um, find a new president superintendent. So we should probably talk about that just a little. <laughs> just bring it up, put it up there. Uh, but we'll be talking between now and then as well anyway. So um, just in terms of getting the hiring committee up and running. Um, I would like, I'm wondering about po the possibility also, oh, outside of the, um, the uh, retreat, um, I'm wondering about perhaps putting together a study session or some sort of workshop to review the processes for um, board policies and how those are adopted and, and reviewed. So just making certain that everybody understands what the different roles are and we've got some new people on the board, e even though I know Trustee Goff and Trustee Dye seems like you've been here forever. You're still new. <laughs> So just to, I, I think that would be uh, something that we would want to bring in the different constituent groups as well to have them at the table to discuss since, um, uh, you know, we're just, we're kind of the last stop, but I think it's important for all of us to understand um, how a bill becomes a law. We can make, <laughs> we can make a little schoolhouse rock video maybe about board policies. <laughs> I might suggest that we do, as we did a few years ago, um, a pre-board workshop, you okay. know, maybe, maybe an hour, an hour and a half, very specifically geared towards that. And, okay. um, it actually, in essence, is a piece of the board um, agenda, but it's a, uh, it's, it's so we open, talk about the workshop, and then we open a regular meeting after that. Um, okay. So, but it's a nice way to approach it, and that, that could be a we get a lot of input from different constituencies which i think you're after yeah awesome all right i think i think that's everything i have so it looks like we've got some special meetings in our future um but we'll about our next uh let's see moving on to trustee and board chair reports um wait a second yeah okay 
Anybody have anything to report? Let's see. Trustee Dodd, anything to report? I don't have anything to report, but just to confirm that the date of uh, the retreat, uh, yes. um, it, is it August 28th, Saturday? Is that? It's whatever that Saturday is. For some reason, the number 26 yes. in my head, but whatever the Saturday is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Great. And, and it's in the morning, correct? Nine to one, I, I think is what nine I Nine to one is what I and, have. And I'm yeah. assuming we're Zooming. Yeah, right now we are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Apologies for uh, making my report a question, but that that's the end of it. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Trustee Goff, anything to report? No, nothing to report. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Trustee Iverson, anything to report? Uh, no report this evening. Trustee Baldini, anything to report? Uh, we have nothing to report here. Oh, we'll be. <laughs> Uh, Trustee DeLuna, anything to report? Um, no, but I uh, wanted to ask something again, um, like Trustee Dodd, that I've been helping a family look for a home and um, to rent. Anyway, on the on the statistics and everything on the real estate websites, they, they don't list Napa Valley College at all. Um, they list Solano uh, College and then Santa Rosa Junior College, but not our college as as the schools in, in this area so i just wanted to point that out and if there's any way to get us on there which were which website was that reference to so it was zillow and oh. redfin and oh. apartments okay. maybe maybe there's something holly can um and it's like whenever you're trying to make google make changes it's like who do i call <laughs> yeah i know and i don't know if it's like the real estate yeah i don't know or either. what so I just thought it was weird. Yeah, it is a little odd. So maybe, I don't know, um, maybe somebody can, um, Holly's the one that, that pops into my head is probably the person who would know who to call or can find out who yeah. to call. I'll, yeah, I'll so follow somebody up can check into that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Oh my goodness. Okay, um, Trustee Rios, anything to report? No report. Uh, student Trustee Soto Gonzalez, anything to report? Um, no, nothing much, except that I did send every trustee an email uh, today regarding like doing a small meet and greet to get to know each of you, since I will be working with you guys for the next academic year. And it's totally optional, you don't have to do it, but it's more just about huh. us getting to know each other, um, just about the board and everything, I don't know, favorite food you like, stuff like that. They're just getting to know you, that's all. And I thought I was special. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. Yeah, I go. got that too. <laughs> and I responded while I was driving. And so I'm sure that half of it came misspelled. So that's my phone's fault, not mine. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't really have a report either. I did attend uh, the first hour of the convocation event, which was really well done. I have to take issue with uh, Krista's um thinking that you could buy a lifetime supply of doritos with a hundred dollar gift certificate yeah. she does not apparently have kids that like doritos because that would not last two weeks in my house but <laughs> but still a great some great great programs and and options for our students i also did the um the hiring committee training um with uh charo just uh yesterday so and our other two um uh members of the board that will be serving on the hiring committee will be going through that training and i think it's also i um, and maybe this should be a um i don't know if it's a um should have been a future agenda item but just a comment i think it would be valuable for all of the trustees to go through at least an abbreviated version of that training just to have an idea of what the process is and and um how things differ for in um the community college recruitment versus um a private industry yeah, definitely but even other public industries um the, the rules are different so um, i think it would be uh i don't know maybe a two-hour version but maybe a 45 minute version for everybody else <laughs> So that's all I have. Um, our next regular meeting, which is we don't need to go back into closed session, uh, will be on September 9th, 2021. And of course, we have our retreat on the 28th. And stay tuned for other potential special meetings. And we're, we're, we're very likely to have a special meeting 
um, prior to the regular. So um, yeah, I figured as much. So keep your cell phones closed. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you ever so much. Thanks, and everyone. Closing at 721 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Aww. Good night. Everyone. Bye. Bye.